Hey, this is Alex from Graysand. In this video, I'll show the entire process of installing a door jam, swinging a door, and fitting a typical lock. The first step is to measure the width of the wall frame and linings. As this wall has pine lining boards installed a bit wider than standard, I'll need to buy a wider door frame and rip it down to the exact size needed. This will allow the door frame to finish flush with both sides of the internal linings. For this project, I'll be using a pre-rebated door frame. The next step is to cut the door frame to the correct size. To work out the correct size for the door frame, I use these formulas. The door width needs to be the door width plus 3.5mm gaps around each side of the door. The door frame height will need to be the door height plus a 3.5mm space on top of the door and a 6mm space from the finished floor height to the bottom of the door. With these measurements, I can now cut the door frame pieces to size. The next step is to rebate the head of the door frame for the styles to fit into. I mark the style positions onto the head and then mark the depth of the rebate and use a miter saw to cut the rebate of the head and a sharp chisel to finish the cuts. Next step is to mark and rebate the hinge positions into the door frame. I prefer to rebate the hinges into the door styles before I install the door frame as it's much easier to do on a set of work stools. I'll scrub the positions of the hinges into the door frame with a sharp knife then chisel out the timber to the correct depth so the hinges will finish flush on the door frame. To assemble the door frame I spread PVA glue on the joints and then fix the frame together with three small brad nails. This will hold it together pretty securely but for added strength I'll add two 70mm screws in each side. The important details are to make sure the frame is assembled flush and square. I will also double check the internal opening size of the frame to make sure it is all correct. I like to cut and nail a piece of timber to the bottom of the frame to help keep the frame square and parallel. The next step is to install the door frame. I begin by checking the hinge side of the wall for plumb. I'll install three packers, top, bottom and middle on the side of the wall frame that has the hinges. I use a 2 meter level to make sure the packers are installed plumb and straight. The packers are where I'll nail and screw the door jam to the wall. I like to have around 6 millimeters for packing on each side of the door frame. I place the door frame into the opening, check the head of the frame is level, then nail the hinge side of the frame into the packers, making sure the door frame is fixed flush with the internal linings. I then nail the opposite side of the door frame into place, starting at the top and packing the frame straight and plumb as I work down the frame. Here's a quick checklist for a door frame to be installed correctly. The hinges to be rebated onto the correct side, sides are straight and plumb and in wind, and check the door frame head is level. Once I'm happy with the installation of the door frame, I add two screws through each packer on the door frame. I can mark the hinge screw positions and then add one screw behind each hinge for a secure fixing. Hold the story rod straight up against the side of the door frame where the hinges go. Push it up until it hits the top of the frame and next take a sharp pencil and copy the hinge locations from the door frame onto the story rod. Just make sure you mark them clearly and precisely. Next, I mark on the door which way the door will open. This is the side of the door that will have the pin of the hinges facing. With hollow coil doors, like the one I'm installing, the hinges need to be installed on the side labelled by the manufacturer, as there will be a solid block in one side to take the lock. Position the story rod 3mm past the top of the door. This represents a 3mm space between the top of the door and the door frame. Then transfer the hinge marks from the story rod to the side of the door with a sharp pencil. Next, I place a hinge in line with the marks 
and trace around it with a pencil. Scribe with a sharp Stanley blade and then chisel the hinge depth into the side of the door. Once this story rod is set up, it can be used to mark out as many door frames and doors as needed without needing to make any more measurements. Once the hinges have been rebated into the side of the door and finished snug and flush, I pre-drill and screw the hinges into position. I also like to use a hinge to pre-drill the screw positions into the door frame before I hang the door. I can now carry and place the door into position. I place the door on a pump or lever with the door at 90 degrees to the frame. Now I just need to screw the hinges into the rebate positions on the door frame to swing the door. If all the setout and calculations are correct, the door will be able to open and close perfectly and smoothly with a 3mm gap around the sides and top of the door with a 6mm space between the bottom of the door and the finished floor height. Every new door lock comes with its own set of installation instructions. Just follow these steps one by one to get the lock working correctly. Most internal door locks are pretty similar. They usually involve marking the center of the door height, then mark the center of the door edge and a 60mm back set on both faces of the door. This lock requires a 50mm hole from both sides of the door and then a 25mm hole for the latch from the edge of the door. I then place the latch into position on the side of the door edge and mark the position of it with a sharp pencil and square. I'll then use a sharp knife and 25mm chisel to chisel out the correct depth of the latch. Follow the instructions step by step as each lock can be slightly different. Once the latch is rebated to the right depth, I pre-drill and screw the latch into the rebate. I then place the handles into place from each side and secure them together with the spindle and supplied hardware. The final step is to install the striker plate onto the door frame. To get this right, I shut the door and transfer the center of the latch position onto the door frame. I'll trace around the striker plate and then drill a 25mm hole into the center of the door jam at about 12mm deep. I now use a sharp knife and chisel to rebake the latch depth into the door frame. Once the striker plate is rebated to finish flush with the door frame, I can screw it into position. Lastly, I make sure to test that the lock operates smoothly and the door swings freely with an even 3mm space around the perimeter. Okay, that's the project finished. Thanks for watching and see you next time.